see them again once more. I'd like to invite a special someone to the podium to address all of you, a person uh, who possibly was like a shadow uh, to late uh, Emirship Ashraf, a person who possibly sat through many of some meetings uh, that um, were held during his strategizing, possibly. A person, I suppose, perhaps, one of the people who misses him the most. Ladies and gentlemen, may I invite to the podium his son, Aman Ashraf, to speak to you. Bismillahir Rahmanir Rahim. President Chandrika Bandaranayaka Kumaratunga. President Maitripala Sivisena. Mr. Azad Sali, leader of the National Unity Alliance. Madam Feriel Ismail Ashraf. Most venerable members of the clergy. Honorable members of parliament. Members of the diplomatic corps. Dignitaries. Guests. Dear friends. Assalamu alaikum. Aibuan and wanakam. It is with mixed emotions that I stand here today to say a few words about my late father. I say mixed because, needless to say, for myself and my family, his absence is a void that would never be filled. But at the same time, it is with a great sense of pride that I also find myself here today. It is said that most men are remembered merely by their deeds alone. But then in the fullness of time, those memories also fade away. It has been 20 years since the passing of late M. H. Mashraf. And to see this August gathering here today, filled with so many faces from all walks of life, from other nations as well, it is but a, a small measure of the impact made by one singular human being on so many lives, and especially to those who are fortunate to have an exchange of words with him, to share his company, to learn from him, and more so. I must on this occasion extend on behalf of my family uh, gratitude and profound thanks to the, United, to the National Unity Alliance, I beg your pardon, and to Mr. Azad Sali, without whose initiative uh, I don't think we would have an event of this nature. We wouldn't have seen an event of this nature. Many often ask me, uh, what's it like to be the son of M.H. Mashraf? Not an easy question to answer, quite complex. But I feel what is unknown by most is that he was, to a great extent, an individual who was misunderstood by society. He was a person who strived with every ounce of his being to give a voice to the Muslims of Sri Lanka, irrespective of which ethnic denomination they represented. But in doing so, he was misunderstood. 
as being a politician with selfish interests. He committed his life towards a united Sri Lanka with justice and liberty for all Sri Lankans. But again, he was misunderstood to be either a separatist or an extremist. But these hurdles, as it were, did not deter him from his cause. He was an individual who was committed and moved with frightening tenacity. We would often joke amongst ourselves that as a minister, when he goes for his walks at uh, police park grounds, uh, the speed of his walking is such that his, poli his security, personal security guards couldn't keep up with him. I mean, that was just an example of, you know, the man. But his greatest attribute, I would imagine, was his ability to build bridges. He enjoyed with immense gratification the company of his family, near and dear and extended, and the company of his friends from both personal, political, and other spheres alike. And I know that if he were here today, nothing would stop him from sending a few of us outside now to arrange meals and, you know, drinks and so on, and to provide a splendid feast for everyone here, because that was his style. You know, he'd invite his friends over, give them a good meal, and spend as much time with them as possible. So, I do not wish to uh, say more. I merely wish to conclude by thanking all of you, each and every one of you, for taking the time amidst your hectic schedules today, it's a working day, to spend this evening with us. And I wish you all a very pleasant evening once again. Thank you. Thank you, Aman, for those few words. Uh,